Good afternoon, Mr. Chivumbu. Good afternoon, Chief Justice, and um, good afternoon to all the commissions. How are you, sir? I am doing fine, Chief Justice. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you. Um, by the way, what is that judgment of yours that uh, is often quoted? I suppose you could be referring to State versus Macheke. I'm not sure. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, I noticed that um, you chose to go all the way to um, all the way to a master's level in your studies. Yes, I did, Chief Justice. And uh, what was your master's degree about? It was LLM in international law. It was a coursework and um, a short dissertation. And my dissertation focused on the role of African court on human and people's rights. I noticed that uh, under 5.1, it says BURIS LLB and LLM cum laude. Is it all of them cum laude or only one? No, I suppose uh, 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 if I didn't put a comma, it should have been a typo, a comma before the LLM. So cum laude is the one that was uh, awarded cum laude. Wow. And, and LLM, um, LLM was awarded cum laude, Chief Justice. Yes. Now, for how many years have you been a judicial officer? It's 20 years going to my 21st year, Chief Justice. And for how long have you acted as a judge? I've acted as a judge um, a total of about 104 weeks, 37 of which was uh, in Houteng, and I think uh, 67, it was in uh, Pumalanga. And you have... Uh, played a number of leadership roles, am I right? Yes, Chief Justice. In uh, those leadership roles, uh, uh, I served as a way to give back to my community, be it the community out there at large or the judicial community. So in those leadership roles, uh, I, I was able to give back to, to that community in a way. Thank you. Um, colleagues, may I have the names of those who have questions for the candidate? Singh. Lucas. Thank you. Uh, JP. Uh, thank you, uh, Chief Justice. Um, should I say Machero no? or? Dimasiari, Chief oh, Justice. Dimasiari. Dimasiari. Yes. JP, Dimasiari. Yes, thank you. No. I want you to talk to us about the importance of research work and sharing of information with colleagues. Uh, during your acting stint in the division, every important case coming from the SEA and the Constitutional Court and the essence of those decisions, we will always hear from you. You became our living library during your stay as an acting judge. Now, why, why, why did you develop love for research work and why you always find it necessary to share information with colleagues? Thank you so much, JP. I suppose this also goes to uh, my calling, which is to give back to the community, be it the judicial community or the community out there at large. Uh, one of the qualifications that I have, it's an IT qualification in Macromedia Dreamweaver. Uh, it may appear insignificant at, at first glance, but with this IT qualification, um, I am able to do a lot of research work. Uh, you will know, like you just indicated, colleagues, both uh, in the Mpumalanga High mm -hmm. Court 
and in the lower court judiciary, if they need any authority delivered by any court between the country or international, I am able to get it in a matter of seconds and avail it to them as, as they wish. And um, th that is just something that I developed. Uh, you would also know on monthly basis, month to month basis, I would be able to share with uh, uh, colleagues of, uh, I mean, judicial officers of uh, various ranks, magistrates, judges, matters of interest to judicial officers. That is hot judgments newly delivered by the Constitutional Court, SCA, or even the high courts. I mean, judges are very busy people. They have no time to really read the judgments. So I do try to make time to read, summarize those judgments in smaller paragraphs, telling what the judgment is all about, and um, avail that to various judges, and that way they're able to know what the judgment is all about. I may go on that just to say, JP, uh, um, that skill was uh, spotted first by, by uh, your brother, J.P. Mlambo, the first time I was called to act for the first time in the high court. I remember when I came from court, I was very much surprised to find this giant stage waiting for me by my office. And I checked, I realized it was the J.P. And humble as he was, he came to my office without any appointment. And when he got in, he inquired, why do you walk to the courtroom with a laptop? And I must have spent about 20, 30 minutes with him to show him what I do with a laptop in court. And that's when he said, you know, I'm convinced if you're able to do research and use laptop in this fashion, if we put you in the high court, even in the motion court, you're going to survive. The rest is history, JP. Now, we might be tempted to say that as a magistrate and particularly as a regional court magistrate, you are much more exposed and almost like becoming a, a, an expert in criminal matters. But as you are aware, uh, the bulk of our work in the division is on the civil role. And uh, you were placed in the criminal role the last time simply because of your expertise and with the idea to uh, settle the backlog also occasioned by uh, the lockdown. Now, to what extent during your stay as an acting judge did you have the opportunity to deal with uh, civil matters? Civil matters, meaning civil trial, unopposed, uh, which can be very critical and it, it, it needs one to be very careful because you can easily make mistakes on the basis that is not uh, opposed, but also the opposed matters in the appeal. Um, what, what is the nature of your experience with regards to that? Thank you so much, uh, JP. Well, maybe for the sake of completeness, talking of uh, the criminal role that I was placed the last term, it would be appropriate to also add that, yes, I did bulldoze that role, uh, uh, if I was to use the words, to deal with the backlog. Uh, I'm saying this because our, our criminal role is also part of the high court uh, uh, matters that we deal with. But getting to your question, uh, I should indicate that I have very great passion in uh, civil work. Hence, uh, uh, my short stint as a tutor lecturer was in a civil procedure civil law and the procedure thereof. And um, lecturer, from time, lecturer where, by the way? Tutor lecturer at the University of Venda before I started uh, as a public prosecutor. Okay. Yes. It was in civil court, uh, civil law and procedure. And uh, the other thing you'll see my CV reflect that uh, I offer training. I do training of the newly appointed uh, uh, magistrates and in particular, regional magistrates uh, um, under the auspices of Sajay. Uh, the training that I do, it's uh, mainly about the, the, I do ethics, judgment writing, and also civil law and procedure. Since 2013, when I was requested to come and act in the high court in uh, Gauteng, it has been described by one of my colleagues here as where the, the, the judges are being cooked. I was doing about 80% of civil work. 
And you will also remember when I came to, to Mpumalanga, you did place me uh, in civil court. I've done uh, uh, motion court, civil trials. And uh, of the judgments that I've delivered, I'm talking of uh, over 150 judgments. More than 80% of those judgments are in civil court. Only about 20% is in the criminal work. Well, I, I have done well, and uh, uh, I think you have gone through my work. You, you did go through my work even when I was still in counting, and I doubt if you found any of my judgments wanting. Thank you. Well, it's not for me to say, but, um, but um, uh, now that you're talking about that, uh, um, did you have any judgments appealed against? And if so, what was the outcome? JP, I've, of all these judgments I'm referring to, a lot of them, there were applications for leave to appeal which I've granted. Uh, I'm yet to have any of the, the, the matters that are allowed to go on, on appeal uh, set, being set aside. I'm yet to come across any of them. Otherwise, um, I do not know of any of the matters that I, I handed down that were set aside on appeal any reported case of significant that you think we need to be told about? Thank you. I, I have had a, a, a few matters reported from, um, I think, uh, um, Judah Law reports uh, uh, 2020, I must have spotted two of those. There's one that was also reported when I acted uh, um, in the housing division. As far as I can remember, they, well, almost all of them, although not everything, it's available on Safli and Judgment Online, but I suppose that's not what you are referring to. You must be referring to Judah. The ones that were reported on uh, Judah, they were all criminal matters. Um, one that I can think of uh, uh, from where I am, it was about the need to sit with assessors when uh, doing a trial on murder as a regional magistrate. Uh, that one was reported. There's also another one that deals with uh, sentencing. It came before me in Mpumalanga by way of review. It uh, emphasizes the principle that even if an offender has a number of previous convictions, he need not be sentenced for those previous conviction. He should be sentenced for the current crime. The previous conviction can only take away the mercy that the court otherwise would have if he was a first offender. Other, he has served his previous convictions or the sentences imposed on those previous convictions. He need not be sentenced for them. Okay. Lastly, uh, and, and for your information, uh, the minister will be uh, appointing you in the course of this week to deal with the collapse role in Brayton. And uh, if, if everything goes well, you will be dealing with that role from Monday and also to make arrangements to take care of the collapse role for the two weeks so that uh, uh, they can come up to date. And that is being done simply because of your expertise uh, in criminal matters. Thank you, CJ. I appreciate that and I'm humbled by that, uh, JP. Uh, CJ, can you please also add me? Yeah, okay, Minister, you're confirming that when... So that I can deny or confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Premier, could, could you also add me, Chief Justice, for on a small okay, issue? Okay, JP. Thank you very much, CJ, and good afternoon to you, Advocate. Good afternoon, uh, Premier. Just one question from me. Uh, do you have any reserve judgment? And uh, if you do have, what could have been the reason for that? Thank you, uh, Honorable Premier. As we talk, I do not have any uh, reserve judgment. The last judgment I handed down was yesterday, so my slate is clean as we speak. Thank you very much for the response and thanks, CJ. Thank you, Premier. Uh, Honorable C. 
Uh, thank you very much, Chief Justice, and good afternoon, uh, Mr. Vachivumu. Uh, good afternoon, I Co Commissioner I Singh. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Just as a follow-up to the- You tried. Yes, is it Rachivumu? Uh, yes, just, that is Rachivumu. You should visit uh, him for one day, we'll, we will teach you well. Thank you, thank you. And uh, you're let me just talk about, uh, just to follow up on the Honorable Premier firstly, this judgment that you delivered yesterday, when was the matter heard? Just It was an appeal matter. Um, uh, the, the matter was heard electronically or, or by way of virtual means. It was about four weeks ago. Yeah, I've never had any, maybe for record, I should indicate, I've never had any judgment reserved for more than two months to the best of my, to the best of my recollection. So it was, we had about four weeks ago. No, no, thank you very much. I just wanted to verify that. And then and firstly, congratulations on receiving all these prestigious awards. I see the lamp of knowledge three years in a row. And I think that speaks for itself. And thereafter, I see that, uh, at what was called the Rand Afrikaans University before established in 1975. Uh, you were the only the third person to re receive the Chancellor's Gold Award and the first black student. So well done on that. No, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I think the, those are all the capabilities that I intend to bring to the bench, to the High Court bench. I appreciate it, Commissioner. No, thank you very much. Now, I, I read somewhere that in you write a number of articles. You're a prolific writer. And uh, some articles have related to environmental law. Am I correct? Or educating the communities on environmental law? Yes, you are right. I, I, I do write a lot. Perhaps I can just remind the commissioner, as I see it, my other role is to serve as an editor-in-chief of uh, the judicial newsletter that is published on a quarterly basis by Sajay. So when you sit there as an editor-in-chief, you have to go through all those articles and then almost every edition as an editor-in-chief, there will have to be an article also coming from me. I also summarize the cases this time, different from the matters of interest to judicial officers that I talked about, but just for this uh, uh, publication. And indeed, um, at, especially at the time that I served as president of uh, the Judicial Officers Association, I had a lot of articles that were published uh, in that, uh, 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 or rather that were published in the website of Juasam. At some point, I should also indicate that uh, uh, with the IT knowledge I have, I was also the webmaster for that association, that is Juasa and uh, Aramsa. I am, I am not currently. But yes, I've written quite a lot, even on environmental law and uh, various other topics. No, thank you very much. Uh, the reason I'm asking that is I have a passion for the environment, having served myself as an MEC for environment some decades ago in 1997, and I still have a passion for environment. I'd just like to know your views on, on, on South African legislation when it comes to environment, particularly the enforcement side. Because in another capacity, we are agitating for specialized wildlife courts because poaching has become a serious problem. Rhino poaching, elephant poaching, et cetera, has become a serious problem in our country. And judgments usually take very, very long. What, what, what would be the reason for that? Is it, is it the preparation for the case? Is it uh, we don't have enough judicial officers to deal with these matters? Can you just share some of your views in that regard? Perhaps I should also shoulder the blame, but in my capacity as one of those who facilitate or train our colleagues, that is judicial officers, that maybe on this side of the environmental law, we haven't given enough uh, attention as we should. Uh, however, I should also indicate to you, Commissioner, there are judicial officers, especially those who are sitting in those uh, uh, should I call them specialized courts or the courts that deal with this kind of cases on a regular basis? In particular, in Mpumalanga, there are judicial officers who deal with these cases swiftly. You check their judgments. They are delivered way on time, wonderfully so. Unfortunately, when once in a while there would be such a case, suppose in a court that normally deals with general criminal work in Gauteng or 
somewhere where they do not specialize in these matters, you will find that a judicial officer will be in need of some kind of induction. And that is where a colleague will take quite some time. And now that you said that, I think it is our responsibility to raise this with uh, uh, those who are in charge of the training, in particular Sajay, to see to it that this training need not be channeled only to those specialized courts, but all the courts general, because any other court, especially in the regional court, even in the high court, any other court can deal with environmental law at any given time. Thank you for that. My last question also relates to environment. And I think these two state-owned enterprises are located in Mpumalanga. Uh, I won't name them, but you know that they are notorious for the uh, noxious elements that go into the air. Uh, what do you think we can do about industries like that, that, that seem to say, well, we are providing a, a utility that uh, the citizenry of South Africa require. So does that mean they can cut blanche, uh, pollute our ears? Look, that one, uh, I must say, uh, sh should I put it that it's a thorn to uh, citizens of this country. A number of people, of course, in Mpumalanga have complained about it. It is very difficult uh, for me to make much remark, especially as a judicial officer. Um, those matters may easily come before me. I don't want to find myself having to recuse myself because I've already made a, a, or formed an opinion regarding the pollution of the air. But uh, uh, Commissioner, I, I think, as far as I know, you are, your background must be that of a legislature. I, I would simply advise that if you hold the view that this pollution is, uh, is the view by a number of other citizens, it's unhealthy and it has to be kept, why don't you take it upon yourself and other colleagues, maybe from uh, the benches around here, to come up with the necessary legislation that may have to outlaw some of the pollution of that kind, and then either criminalize that or impose the necessary fines if the pollution that is emanated is above whatever required quantity, I suppose, there are um, people who can do the measurements along those lines. Once you have that, I think it will simplify the work for us as judicial officers to be able to uh, enforce the law that you have legislated. That, that would be my advice to you. No, thank you very much for that uh, advice. I think the time has come when we need to criminalize and not penalize. Because penalties, you know, these corporates have got lots of money to pay fines, but we need to criminalize some of these uh, transgressions. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, uh, Mr. Magistrate. No, Commissioner, I agree with you. Before there's any penalizing in any event, there has to be criminalized. Once anything is criminalized, whatever you do to punish that person in penalizing, it will be, a, a, we are talking uh, uh, from the same mic, uh, Honorable Commissioner. I agree with you. Thank you. Honorable Lucas, thank you, thank you, uh, Honorable Sim. Honorable Lucas. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Justice. I have been covered in some of the issues, but I I want to, uh, oh, good afternoon, advocate. I would want you to, to tell us a little bit more about the program that you are running with, with UNISA, particularly with regards to community services. But also since Honorable Singh have been speaking about the issue of the environment, a few years ago when I was also in the same former position where he said he was, there was a big dispute in Mpumalanga around the issuing of mining rights, particularly for coal, in spite of the fact that there was a, there was a challenge of pollution of water and, and the surface the, the ground surface. Now, my issue is that you are running this community service, this program of UNISA. How can you then also use it to make sure that the people of Mpumalanga understand the fact that they can actually object to the fact that people can get mining rights without them properly being consulted and so on. I just thought in the same context. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Commissioner Lucas, I 
I, I share your sentiments. And um, yes, what you're talking about is a UNISA's chance to advance. Like I indicated, I, I, I do serve in various roles to give back to our community because my calling as a judicial officer is to do uh, service delivery in the form of justice to our community. And uh, thankfully, there are a number of institutions like you spotted the one uh, uh, by UNISA through which I use as a vehicle to give back to our community. UNISA has this which they call chance to advance. From time to time, it could be once in a year, sometimes twice in a year, they will invite me and we will do community outreach. Uh, in Mpumalanga, we did this outreach uh, in Siabuswa. We did it one year and uh, we visited Siabuswa again, I think about three years later. We will be addressing communities on various topics especially of great interest to that community in the area. And uh, UNISA will give them certificates after attending all the sessions wherein I will be addressing. They will call them, say, come talk to Judge Takarani. And then we will sit down, we talk about the, the, the constitution, we talk about their rights, we talk about the Domestic Violence Act, how they can access the courts, what they should do. We talk about the Recognition of Customary Marriages Act. And uh, another topic that is very close to my heart is on maintenance. You will find it very interesting that here in our communities, we got so many children who are very poor, yet their fathers are very rich. They do not know that uh, uh, they as the children, especially when they grow, they are 18, they are at varsity level. They don't know that they can approach the court on their own. Now that they are adults, they are 18, they can approach the courts to sue for maintenance simply because their mothers, since they were young, did not want to sue for maintenance for one reason or another. Now they are grown up. They know this. The father is very rich. What happens next when they want to study at university level? They end up applying for NFSAs. These are the kids who are not supposed to be applying for this. They should just be approaching the courts on their own. There is my father. He's rich. He can pay my tuition. And we do this uh, community outreach. And uh, um, on the topic that you have just suggested, uh, uh, Commissioner, I will definitely uh, take it up. I make an undertaking that going to the future, I will raise it, of course, with UNISA that perhaps this is one of the topics we should uh, uh, address the communities on because uh, I don't just come with my own topics. I tell them what I suggest we talk about. They approve of it. And then we address the communities on those topics. Thank you. Th thank you very much, uh, Advocate, and thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Honorable Lucas. Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you, uh, CJ. Uh, the Down room. The, I've heard you about how you use your skill for, for research, the IT skill. How do you think that the uh, skill can be extended to help the, the division with the uh, digitization efforts by the, by the JP or the judiciary as a whole? Th thank you so much, uh, uh, Minister. Uh, those skills, in fact, uh, the JP will confirm are being utilized as you speak. I can also inform you um, with those skills that were spotted by JP Mlambo as indicated earlier, I am serving in JIT committee that he chairs. And uh, in that committee, I mainly look up until today after the interest of the lower court judiciary. I was uh, fortunate to be part of the delegation that was sent by the Office of Chief Justice in 2015 to observe the uh, e-filing system in the United States. And uh, we went there under the leadership of then uh, Deputy Chief Justice uh, Musaneke. And of course, I was looking after the interest of the lower court judiciary. I was part and parcel of the training of the judiciary when case line uh, finally went on air together with uh, the chairperson here in Houghton. Although case line has not been fully introduced to the Pumalanga branch of the high court, we are doing uh, uh, cases. We have been pushed from our comfort zone by 
this virus called uh, Corona. Uh, we are doing all our civil work uh, virtually. And of course, my skills did come in very handy. Uh, for example, whenever, um, wherever I sit, when the colleagues have issues with the laptops, be it internet, emails, before they call in any IT help, as long as I'm there, they first ask me, hey, what's wrong with my computer? I know all the four corners of JP's laptops there, what to fix when things are not right. So now that we are doing our work virtually, yes, we are uh, um, introducing that in, in Mpumalanga. It's just a matter of time that we will also be fully fledged on our case line. And as long as I'm there, I think uh, uh, if I'm recommended, my role in seeing to it that every judicial officer is able to run a trial, it's able to do motion court virtually, will simply have to continue that way. Thank you, Minister. Yeah, you might be aware that I'm from one of the communities adjacent to the Kruger National Park, uh, Pushback Ridge. Why do, you, why do you think it should could be the role of the judiciary in sending a very strong message to the communities around the park about the dangers of Reno poaching? Right. Uh, I, I suppose the judiciary can easily talk uh, when they meet out their sentences to those who do poaching. That is the best way to communicate to the criminals. You know, I can tell you that in imposing the sentence, there are few purposes that are recognized in law. And if we are to take care of all these purposes, when it comes to sentencing, we will be able to send the right message. The purposes will be uh, deterrence of the criminal himself, deterrence of the other would-be offenders who are thinking of committing similar offenses. It will be retribution, which simply tells that punish the offender, let him feel the pinch of his wrongdoing. There are other purposes that talk about the uh, correction and reformation of the offender. But as the Supreme Court of Appeal rightly pointed it out in State v. Schwartz, a, nine, a 2015 judgment, when it comes to serious offenses, such as rhino poaching, surely uh, the other purposes such as corrective reformation of the offender should take back seat. This time we should look at retribution and deterrence. And if we as the judiciary, only where the offenders, the criminals are caught and evidence it's led that they are convicted, that message has to be sent in terms of these uh, purposes of sentence. Yeah, no, thank you, Borachi uh, Bumu. I confirm uh, that appointment, the, the one that the JP spoke about, not, not this one. <laughs> this one is for this commission. <laughs> in the Arua Minister. <laughs> Judge President Lambo. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Justice. I think the candidate has covered the one issue regarding the study tour of the U.S. Center for State Courts. Um, uh, your association is Juasa, or do you belong to both for just Juasa? No, I, I was a member of uh, Juasa. I served uh, until I was the president. The moment I was elevated to the uh, regional court, I became a member of uh, Aramsa, which I'm serving in its NEC, and I am currently its spokesperson. Uh, I am not a member of Juasa as we speak. Okay. The period when Juasa called a strike by judicial officers. Were, st were you still a member of Juasa? I was still a member of Juasa. Um, what was your view to that call that the magistrates should go on strike? And what is your view? Do you think judicial officers enjoy the right to strike? Thank you, JP. My views were made very clear. I will refresh your memory, JP, if you remember. 
The last conference that I presided as a president of JUASA, I had invited you as a guest. Uh, something that may have taken place before you were allowed to address the podium was a discussion on whether we should go on a strike or not. And there was serious debate because there were colleagues who were vehemently pushing that magistrates should strike. But there are those amongst them myself who were pushing that, no, as judicial officers, we cannot go on a strike. At the end of the day, I took that aspect to a vote and uh, the majority voted against striking. And I handed over the button to the next president with that position that there is not going to be a, a, a strike. Unfortunately, the new NEC under the new leadership, while I wasn't a president anymore, decided to take a decision from the NEC level, but no longer on the AGC level, to go on a strike. And as a past member or as past president, at that stage, I was also serving in the NEC. I wasn't that pleased, I must say, and uh, as a so, result so, of that decision, I yeah. even resigned from that NEC. Okay. But that decision was not supported by the AGC. Yeah, because the strike did happen, although not widespread, but it happened. But your view today to this commission is you are a safe bet. You don't subscribe to judicial officers having a right to strike, and you will not push that line. Definitely so. In fact, even the AGC of that association took that position, and that's why I subscribe to it. Thank you very much, the Ch Chief Justice Ndolibu. JP. CJ, if you may add me. <laughs> you are the only one, uh, Commissioner Sigova. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. The the master. Master, I would do with God. Da. Um. You, you indicated that you bulldozed the, 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 the criminal trial role. I want you to share with the commission uh, the extent that you went when your role was to collapse because of load shedding. What did you do? Um, maybe just, just yeah. to, 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 am I to share about the time that I bulldozed the role or the time that the role collapsed? No, no, the role was to collapse on a particular day because of load shedding. What efforts did you do to ensure that you proceed with your trial? Oh, I, I now understand. No, uh, um, Commissioner Skogo, you could be referring to that incident where in a, yeah, I have that great passion. I went to court that morning, um, I was told that there was load shedding, started at seven o'clock, but at nine o'clock it would be over. Then we'll proceed with the matter, the trials that we had. And uh, by nine o'clock, there was still no electricity. Then it came clear that this is more than load shedding. 10 o'clock, still no electricity. And I told the, 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 the state council and everybody else that no, wait, nobody goes home, we're going to do this trial. When I realized that this is more than load shedding and I asked a, a part of my personnel to confirm with ESCOM and it was confirmed that no, we won't have electricity the whole day. And I noticed that there was electricity generated from a generator from the nearby police station. I said, can you inquire from the station commander if we can borrow from his generator so that we deal with our work here? The station commander was willing, but unfortunately they didn't have the extension cables. And I asked that let's measure the distance. It was uh, measured to be about 80 meters. And I gave cash to the court order, go to the nearby supermarket, get the cords up to 80 meters. We connected from the generator at the police station. We had power that was able to give power, I mean, uh, electricity in the courtroom and at uh, the server. Then we were able to do the trial. We worked the whole day and those cords are still available Whenever we have load shedding, JP in a Brayton, it's covered. Thank you, Ndoriwo. Thank you, CJ. Thank you so much. Uh, you are excused. 
Thank you so much, uh, Chief Justice, and thank you to the commissioners. Thank you.